Okay, in our last video, we came up with this conclusion. If the first differences are the same, then the relationship is linear. If the first differences are different, then the relationship is nonlinear. So we're going to uh, explore this on a little bit more abstract scale. Instead of looking at the example that we just looked at with the stone dropping, we're going to um, take it a little bit more abstract. So in this situation, we could say that the time is actually represented by an X and the speed is represented with a Y. And we can just do this for any type of relationship, regardless of whether it's a real life scenario or maybe an X and a Y that we don't know where we can take this table and calculate the first differences and predict whether the relationship is linear or nonlinear, regardless of whether we know what the relationship is all about. And that's what the second part of this video is all about. So we're going to complete this worksheet and you might be interested in opening up the assignment right now and opening up the worksheet that we're going to fill in. This is totally up to you. You can watch this video and then fill in the worksheet after, or you could try and do it at the same time. But I'm going to open up the, um, the worksheet right now so you can see what it looks like. So again, I'm going to demo it in this test class. This isn't your class. Your class, of course, is in blue and things like that. Um, but you're looking for this assignment, Unit 3, Day 2, L versus N, that means linear versus nonlinear, first differences. Okay, and we have the videos that are here, but then you're going to be looking for this, um, this doc. So if we go to view assignment, you'll be able to see it better. Now, the doc is created for you with your name on it automatically. Okay, as soon as you go into the assignment, you're going to go look right here and you can click on that. Don't tune it, turn it in yet because you haven't done anything to the assignment. We have to edit it just like you did in your worksheet assignment. So if we click on it, you'll get a copy of this worksheet and you can fill it in as we um, are doing it together. Or you can, here it is, or you can um, just do this afterwards. Totally up to you. We're going to be answering the first few together and then I'm going to let you do the bottom half on your own and submit it back to me. OK, so if you'd like to open that now, you could you could put pause the video and have the two side by side or you can fill this all in later. So let's go back to what we're doing. I'm going to do it by hand here and then go and fill it in uh, on our worksheet in a moment. So we're going to look at this abstractly. So this X and Y, it could be time and speed or distance or something, but it doesn't matter. All we care about is, is this relationship is the data represented a linear or a nonlinear one? Now, there's two rules. When we're comparing first differences and calculating first differences, the x's must go in order. So if they're all scattered about, you can't tell what the jumps are. OK, you have to be able to have it in order. And the x's must go up by the same amount, preferably ones. OK, if they don't go up by the same amount, the jumps won't make sense. So let's look at this one. We're going to calculate the first differences. So remember, you can do it by counting the jumps or by doing the subtraction. So here you see that we're at six and we used to be at three. I think it's safe to say that you know that that's a jump of three. But what's the math? You actually do six minus three to get three. But I'm, I'm not going to write that out every time. Going from nine to six, or sorry, going from six to nine. Again, it's nine minus six. That's three. 12 minus 9 is 3. 15 minus 12 is 3. You can see the jumps, even if you just count the jumps, going up by 3, up by 3, up by 3, up by 3. So this pattern is going to go up by 3s, which means if we graphed it, it would be linear. The first differences are the same, and so it's linear. Let's look at the second example. Going from 1 to 4, that's a jump of 3. So is this one. Maybe it's linear. Oh, wait. Going from 4 to 5, that's a jump of 5. Oh, sorry, 4 to 9, that's a jump of 5. Going from 9 to 6, 16, hmm, that's 16 minus 9, that's 7. That's a jump of 7. And this last one is a jump of 9. Are the first differences the same? No. So what do we say? It's nonlinear. Now, recognize, I know there's a pattern in these first differences, but that's a grade 10 pattern. All we care about, if they're the same, they're linear. If they're not the same, it's nonlinear. And the graph would not be a straight line, just like the example we just saw in the other video. 
Let's look at this one. This one's interesting. If we're talking about jumps, these numbers are actually getting smaller, aren't they? They're going down. Well, you're allowed to have lines going down. So why can't we have graphs going down or jumps going down? So let's think about this. If we're going from 2 to negative 1, think about the thermometer in the classroom. We're at 2 and we're getting colder to negative 1. That, to me, is going down 3. So we would say the first difference is negative 3. If you want to actually do the math on this, you know how we did this? 6 minus 3, 4 minus 1. Let's do the math here. Negative 1 minus 2. So negative 1 is cold. You're getting colder. You're at negative 3. So it's a jump of negative 3. Let's try and look at the jumps. If you're at negative 1 on the thermometer, go down to negative 4. That's colder by 3. And then colder by 3. And colder by 3. These are going down by 3s. So the first differences are negative. Are they all the same though? Yes. So it's linear. I don't care that this, the first differences are negative. It just means this one goes up and this one goes down. Even this last one, if you wanted to do the math, if you were a little nervous about this, take this number and subtract it. Just like we did 15 minus 12, take it 3. We can do negative 10 minus minus 7. Negative 10 minus minus, well, minus minus means add. Remember, taking away cold makes things warmer. And negative 10 plus 7 is negative 3. I don't expect to see this math. In fact, I really think it's easier if you think about the jumps. These jumps are going down, so the first differences are negative. But since they're the same jumps, it's linear. All right, let's go to our worksheet. And actually, what I'm going to do is put this here and put this up here so that I'm going to fill in this worksheet um, with you. And we can see how um, you can do this on your own to finish the rest of this. So <clears throat> the same two rules are there. You see, I've done, I filled in the first one for you. Six minus three is three. Now this could be, if you wanted, you could say a plus three, but I guess I didn't have enough room. Going from six to nine plus three, plus three, plus three. It's just going up three. Do I need the plus? No, I don't. So I could just call it like this. All right, four minus one, that's a jump of three. So we go over into the cell and we type in three. Nine minus four is a jump of five. This one's seven, this one's nine. It's just exactly the same what we just did here. And since the first differences are not the same, we can highlight this. Go up to our pen tools right here and highlight. And I'm going to highlight that it's nonlinear. This last one, these were going down by threes. So I'm going to go net down three, down three, down three, down three. Okay, down three. Since they're all the same, this one is linear. Okay. So you're going to be filling out more of these, but we've got a couple more examples. All right, let's go back to our sheet here and move on to the next slide. Let's look at this one. So look at the X's. The X's go 1, 4, 5, 3, 2. Well, if we're looking at the jumps and it goes 1 to 4 and then 5 and then backwards to 3 and 2, of course these jumps are all going to be out of whack. So we think of our first rule, and our first rule is the x's must go in order. Otherwise, you can't tell first differences. So for these ones, we're going to have to reorganize this table. Okay? So underneath it, I'm going to make a little table. Now, on the worksheet, the table's drawn for you. But I'm going to draw a table, and it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to put these in order. And I'm going to find their corresponding y values. So at 1, it's 2. At 2, oh, it's down here, 2, it goes to 4. At 3, it's 6. At 4, it's 8. And 5, it's 10. Now that it's in order, I can confidently do the first differences. I couldn't do it before. What's the jumps? Going from 2 to 4, that's a jump of 2. From 4 to 6, jump of 2. 4 to 6 to 8, jump of 2. Jump of 2. So this one is linear. If you had calculated first differences here, this is jump of six, jump of two, down four, down two. 
Well, of course the jumps are all out of whack because the X's are out of whack. So you need to put them in order before you can calculate the first difference. Let's do the same thing for this one. This one, well, they are in order, but it's easier if we have them going up. Then we can count the jumps easier. So the one is the 10. Oops, sorry, one is 10. Two is eight. Three is six. Four is four. Five is two. Now we have a better idea of what the first differences are doing. This relationship is actually going down. You see how the 10 goes to eight and then goes down to six, down to four, down to two. So these are going down by twos, down two, down two. So the first differences are all going down two. Are the first differences all the same? Yes, they are. So what does that mean? This is a linear relationship. Again, we need to put it in order and have it in order to calculate the first difference. What about this next one? Well, this goes two, four, five, six, eight. They're in order, but the second rule states that the x's must go up by the same amount, preferably go up by ones. So if the x's don't jump on the same ones, how could we check the y values? So we have to make sure they go up by the same amount. So again, we're gonna have to reorganize this. So I've drawn a new table here. I've got the two, and then I've got a four, and then I've got a five. Interesting. What I'm missing is a three. And then it goes five, six I've got. Do I have the seven? No, I've got an eight. But I'm going to have to include that seven so that it now goes up by the same amount. If I'm looking at my data then, two is a nine, four is a 17. I have to figure out what that number in between is. Five is 21, six is 25, eight is 33. All right. So it's hard to tell what the first difference is is because I'm missing some of these. Well, let's look here. If I go from 17 to 21, what's the first difference? Well, 21 minus 17, that's four. Going from here to here is a jump of four. What if I go from 21 to 25? That's another jump of four. So I wonder if I go backwards and jump a four, or if I go this way and jump four. So if I'm at 9 and I jump 4, I'll be at 13. That would be a jump of 4. What if I go from 13 to 17? That's a jump of 4. So I think the number right in there is 13. In fact, what you can think of, if you go from 2 to 4, that's 2 jumps. And from 9 to 17, that's 8. Except I took 2 jumps to get there. So 1 jump of 4 two jumps of four is two jumps to get to eight. What if we do the same idea here? This is one, two jumps. This is one, two jumps. What's the difference between 25 and 33? Well, 33 minus 25 is eight, but I took two jumps. So that means there must be two jumps of four in there. And if there's two jumps of four, I go from 25 to 29 and then jump another four to get to 33. So I have this now all in order and I have it going up by the same amount. So by taking my data and reorganizing like this, I can tell that this all goes up by fours and this too is linear. So all of these are linear. Now let's go back to our chart and fill in these second ones then. So, the first example here, I've already done for you. We took this, which was all unorganized, reorganized it down below and saw that the difference was two. And so it's linear. This one we're gonna have to take and reorganize. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. I don't need any of the extra spaces. And this goes 10, eight, six, four, two just like I reorganized over here. And the first difference, this is going from 10 to eight. So that's going down two. And this is going down two and down two and down two. I can check that by subtracting any of these. Two minus four is negative two. Eight minus 10 is negative two. These are all the same. And therefore this one 
is linear. And I can go and highlight linear. Our third example is just what we did here. We had the two. We didn't have the three. We do have the four, the five, the six. We didn't have the seven, but we did have the eight. So if we fill in the stuff we know from the top, this was a nine. We didn't know the three. Then we had 17 and 21 and 25, and then 33. But we figured out the number in between there is 13. And the number in between these is 29. And then the first differences are all four. Each jump is four. And so since each of these is the same, this one is linear. All right, so now what you're going to do is complete the rest of this worksheet. This is for you to try. So you're going to do all of this and complete all of these things. You're going to find the first differences and decide if they're linear or nonlinear. These ones you don't have to reorganize. These ones you do. When you reorganize, calculate the first difference and decide if it's linear or nonlinear. Now I'm going to go back to Tyler here as my sample student. He's going to go in and do all of these, right? And calculate whatever the first difference is. Okay, four, one, one, one. It's not that, he's wrong. But he, he's gonna fill in all of these and he's gonna decide if they're linear or nonlinear by highlighting this and doing all that stuff. He obviously didn't fill in the stuff that we just filled in, but you'll have to fill that in as well. We did this top half together, so that'd be easy. But then you're going to have to do all of these ones on your own. Fill all of these in. Figure out what the first difference is. Well, he shouldn't fill in here. He has to reorganize this. So he's going to do all this. And then when he's done, all he has to do is go up here and push turn in. Okay? So you're going to complete and fill in the bottom charts, deciding if they're linear or nonlinear. And then you're going to push turn in. So when you do that, you'll see that... It will first, they're going to confirm, is this what you're going to hand in? It's already attached. You don't need to do anything. It's attached. You're going to push turn in. And you'll notice that the turn in turned in, well, the turn in button, now it says turn in. And this assignment is done. So if I go back to my, work, my uh, Google homepage, you'll see for Tyler here, this assignment is done. Okay, it's all grayed out. Remember, this is our sample class. Okay, so you need to go to Google Classroom and finish the bottom half of this chart. Um, we have did we did the, you're, you, of course, you're gonna have to fill in the top half, but we did that one together. But you're gonna need to do the bottom half on your own and push submit, and then you're all done. If you'd like more practice, you can go into your textbook and try some more of this in calculating first differences. Regardless, Good luck, and I look forward to seeing you turn in this bottom half of this worksheet.